shoot within stuff like that is tough. Hello my friends, welcome to the metal shop and welcome to Holly Sniper Installation Part 2. Sorry, <laughs> I got a little excited, got a little ahead of myself and realized that I hadn't filmed any of this. So you saw in the little montage that I put at the beginning that I had a friend of mine fabricate a little bump out here, a little pocket for the throttle linkage. And basically, you know, just a little square aluminum, you know, welded this on, you saw in the montage. So we bumped out here for the throttle linkage that you see down there. And over here, we did a bump in for the giant uh, HEI style distributor. Anyway, so I really haven't done that much. Um, I dropped this in place. I used, I, it's not tight yet, but I've got some really nice ARP um, carburetor studs. And these are expensive. I mean, you could get them on Amazon, not, you could get cheap ones on Amazon for six dollars these were like 26 dollars and i went with the black instead of the stainless steel or the chrome but let me tell you what someone even put in the comments like just when you thread an arp bolt it is so satisfying and he's so right they thread so nicely so i've got the unit dropped in place this wire here is for the water temp sensor which i ran here i had a little adapter thankfully it's all it's very tight in here and i still have to you know do something with this extra wire but this hole here is where the fuel inlet is going to be. So you can run your fuel in either here or here or here. It was set up from Holly um, over here. You can't really see it right there. I moved it over to here. I'm gonna go fuel in. And this, this is always fuel out that you cannot move, but you can do fuel in anywhere you want. And this is where the turkey pan was set up for fuel in and fuel out or you know vice versa but that's where um, the lines are so thankfully I had this other huge hole here tough to see it's getting a shadow on it in the bottom of the turkey pan where um, let's go around the other side of the car enjoy the walk here where that hole in the bottom of the turkey pan was big enough that I could fit all these harnesses through these great big harnesses through one at a time. And you know, you count these number of wires here <laughs> and you read the instructions and I'm gonna use five wires <laughs> and this is for the little display. But what I can do, and there's that bump out, better shot of that bump out. What I can do is I'm gonna tuck the wires all right down here in the valley and run them here to the back and you know, from there where I need to go. Uh, normally, you know, your kick down linkage is there which does have to move, but I don't use a kick down linkage. Obviously I'm gonna have a standard. Uh, sorry, I did make this the other day. This is the J, I think it's JLT that makes those. Oil catch can, and I used the Fragola push lock hose. I didn't even document that. I just kind of, you know, built that thing, threw that thing together as it's kind of like a PCV system. It's gonna draw a positive crankcase relation through here. Um, there is a one-way valve there. You can see it right there. A really nice expensive one-way valve from the motorcycle industry. It's like $100, not a cheap, made in China Amazon one uh, that will work like a PCV valve and it's hooked to vacuum, which I've now hidden underneath here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put a little um, convoluted tubing here because th that's one thing, the edges 
on the turkey pan are a little bit sharp. So I especially wanna protect the harnesses and the fuel line here. This is going to be for the, the fuel line. And I, and I wrapped it in that Contatec, that Continental Contatec um, hose on the outside. So that will guard it coming through the hole. So I've just got, you know, a little bit of plumbing here to do. And I ran a vacuum line to the vacuum advance. And of course, I just grabbed a piece of it and ran it off. I thought I had about two feet. It's probably about 22 inches. I could use the two feet. Probably gonna have to replace this. It's just a little more taut than I would like. And this is really the only vacuum line I'm gonna have in the car. This is set up so that you can run, you know, vacuum, if you have vacuum assist brakes, um, for your master cylinder and so on, but I really don't need any of that. So I'm gonna get some stuff cleaned up here, get those fuel lines, which are way too long, get them cut up and mounted in place. And it looks like I was really smart here in getting the 90 here. I'm absolutely positively gonna need the 90 for the return and here, uh, I actually bought, all I bought was a 90 and a 45 and I got a bunch of straight fittings that came with the kit. I think the 45 will actually be perfect here. So sometimes you get lucky. So let's get, uh, I'm just gonna get some of this stuff uh, cleaned up and then I will uh, bring you along. Cool. All right. So it is several hours later. Um, did take the dog for a long walk though in there. But we have the Holly Sniper installed. You can see there, see that wiring harness? And I did have a little bit of really nice convoluted tubing there. Um, there's able to wrap that in because the, the edges of this turkey pan are sharp. Now, quite honestly, this pan has been just a gigantic pain in my behind. I mean, having to have it modified here and here. And I wanted to leave this a 45 because if you can see the line, this is the fuel line in and I wanted that to be a nice gentle curve right in no restrictions to that whatsoever so I ended up grinding out you know probably a full inch of that turkey pan to move that line over this way if you see over here I had to ease the corner as well here with the 45 which is fine there is a little pinch in the line but that's actually the, the hose barb goes right to about here so it's really not, it's not really pinching anything. And again, that's on the return side anyway that I'm not super concerned about. Also the turkey pan, um, tightening up the, uh, the studs in each corner proved to be difficult. You could hit this one with a straight socket and an extension, but the rest of them I couldn't get. And I remembered that I had this. This is just a wrench that someone bent. And this was honestly, my friend that runs a body shop was junking a car and someone left a tool kit in it. And I grabbed a bunch of these tools and he had a bunch of half inch wrenches that were bent like this. Thankfully did, I thought I got it pretty tight. And then I remembered, oh, that's right. I have a crow's foot. So this is just a crow's foot and extension. When I put that there on a ratchet, those were not very tight at all. And they want 60 to 80 foot pounds of torque on those bolts. So this crow's foot that I just had, and this came from the same the crow's foot came from the same car that they were junking in that toolkit. I am a total scrounge. I will totally grab tools like that that most people would just throw away. These ratchet and cutters have proven invaluable for cutting all the hose and you know this exterior sheathing hose and so on. The three-in-one oil works great on these Earl's fittings, these push lock fittings. You're not going to get them to slide in without you know just a little bit of lubrication but man does that look good and I just I really want the look of the turkey pan so I've made you know I've done a lot of extra work to get that going there's a bunch of leftover hose and pieces and parts and parts as parts that I have there if you're old enough to know what that is hit me up in the comments the parts as parts it's pretty funny and I forgot to put the right angle throttle linkage on before this was in place, turkey pan strikes again, putting that nut on, that's a nylock nut on the outside there proved to be pretty difficult. This is uh, my throttle linkage. I just, what I did here, I'll show you. I This came with a kit that I got from, uh, I can't remember where. It's a, it's a Shelby throttle, you know, from the 60s. It's gonna, 
you know, we'll come here from the throttle pedal, we'll go up to here, you know, and there'll be a bulkhead fitting. And like I said, this is what they used on the, the Shelby Cobras and the Mustangs. And I, like I said, I don't remember who I got it from. I'll, I'm try, I'll try and include it in the link. But anyway, so I, I cut threads into this rod rather than using just a, you know, pinch fitting or whatever. So this is really nice. And this is just stuck in here. It's too long. I have to cut it. Um, but I did get the threads cut in that. So that's going to be one of the next things I can do. This is the, the piece I was waiting for to have this in place because that way I can, I'll know exactly where to put that um, fitting there and have like a little cheat sheet here that they gave me. I laminated bell crank, they call it a bell crank, and you got hind joints, and pretty sim pretty simplistic, but it, but it works. It's better, much better than a cable, much more period correct than a cable. So anyway, sorry, I'm long-winded. I did get, like I said, I got all the, all the plugs extended here where I want, and this is the, uh, for the O2 sensor, which I'm gonna mount in this header right here. I'm gonna have a bung welded in. Um, I don't know if you can see that better, that nice convoluted tubing to protect the wiring harness here from those sharp edges. Anyway, success. Doesn't look like much, but it's, that's beautiful. I love the gold finish and really the piece de resistance for <laughs> the Cobra. And once I put that Stellings and Hellings air cleaner on here, it will be nice. Um, all right, so I'm going to close out. For this success, take the success and go. So as always, my friends, I truly appreciate your support. Please uh, hit me up in the comments. Give me those thumbs up. Keep those thumbs up rolling in. They help me out. And subscribe, recommend my videos to your friends. I still respond to, to all comments. And my channel is, is growing slowly but surely. And what little I make from the advertisements on this channel, I pump right back into the channel. Not doing Patreon thing yet, but, you know, maybe someday. All right, my friends, take care. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.